Some persons have expressed that they liked the alternative development protocol that I covered in the last few sessions, but they have reservations about not using the deconvolution method that was advised in Blur Exterminator. I get that, they once really deconvolved stars. By and large, I haven't seen any big difference between the stars we get when Blur Exterminator is run at the end of the development method versus the beginning. Despite what the literature says, there's a little bit, but I I've, I've keep running these tests over and over and it's, it's minuscule really. But still, deconvolved stars can look nice and if you want them, you want them. And there is a simple way to put truly deconvolved stars back into the image. Let's go through it. So for this video, we're going to return to the image of the Whirlpool Galaxy that we used in the last video on the Aesthetic Development Protocol. I'm just going to start calling it the ADP. And just like last time, I've run a spectrophotometric color calibration just to balance the colors. And right after I ran the spectrophotometric color calibration, I just ran Blur Exterminator. This deconvolves the stars and sharpens up everything. And according to RC Astro's documentation, this is how we best apply the Artificial Intelligence version 4 to get the best deconvolution possible. Once the Blur Exterminator is done with its job, I then ran the Star Exterminator. This will extract those deconvolved stars into a separate star plate, which we'll save and use later when it's time to reintegrate them back into the image. Now here's where things are going to get a little bit interesting, because once we have that star plate, we are then going to back up our image all the way back to the spectrophotometric color calibration. We're going to start again with the image from there. And as you can see, this puts the stars right back in the image. So what was the point? Well, you'll see. Some of you, I'm sure, have figured this out already. With the stars back in there, we are now going to go ahead and run through the ADP development protocol as normal. We'll first run a histogram transformation to stretch the light curve and get the image bright enough for us to work with in the Curves Transformation tool. Then we'll go ahead and work our curves, adjusting luminance first to draw down the blacks, protect the brights, and bring up the middles. Once I have the luminance curve where I want it, I'll just add a bit of a C curve onto the saturation channel just to increase the color a bit. Now, with the histogram and curves adjusted to something very nice, we're going to open up the noise exterminator and continue processing this just like we would in the Aesthetic Development Protocol. We're now going to remove the noise. And as soon as noise exterminator is finished doing its job, we're going to open up the blur exterminator again, and this time have blur exterminator run on the entire image. And as covered so many times in all the previous videos on the Aesthetic Development Method, I know this goes almost completely against the way the documentation from RC Astro says to do things, but it does work. It yields some incredibly beautiful images, which are, insofar as I can tell, true to what's actually there. You'd be hard pressed to find an error in these images. Once the Blur Exterminator has done its job, we have technically finished creating an image by way of the Aesthetic Development Protocol, but now we're going to do something wonky. We are going to run Star Exterminator again, this time on those stretched, non-linear stars. Now for this to work well, you have to make sure to select the Unscreen option on the Star Exterminator panel. Unscreen tells Star Exterminator that it's working with non-linear material. And when it knows this, it does a pretty good job getting anything that looks like a star out of the image, even when that data is non-linear, as here. Now we end up with yet another star plate. This one's a basically a junk plate. You can label it junk stars or just delete it. You're not going to need this one. Because according to the Blur Exterminator literature, those stars have not experienced the best possible deconvolution. In fact, the Blur Exterminator literature says that if you run Noise Exterminator first, stars aren't truly deconvolved, they're just sharpened. Personally, I've found that the sharpened stars look 99% as good, but, you know, your mileage may vary. You might or might not like the way they look. But as you can see, the Star Exterminator has done a really beautiful job removing those nonlinear stars. You'll probably notice there's an odd artifact lower left center. It looks to me like a black compression artifact. I don't know why that's there this time. It's never appeared there before, but anyway, it's going to be easy to remove in the next step. So in the next step, we are going to switch over to my favorite image editor and compositor, Affinity Photo. 
And there, we are going to drag our image of the galaxy into Affinity Photo. Once in Affinity Photo, I'm just going to duplicate the image of the galaxy because as a rule of thumb, you should never work with a base layer. That's sort of your proof in case you make a mistake and need to start all over again. And I'll make that uh, original image invisible so I can't accidentally work with it. And then I'm going to switch to the inpainting brush tool, which is very effective, and just brush that error out of there. Affinity Photo has its own very powerful artificial intelligence and is amazing at removing unwanted artifacts. When that's done, I'm just going to drag the star plate back into the image. Now, that's the plate that we made at the very beginning of this process, where we ran Blur Exterminator first, then Star Exterminator. Those are properly deconvolved stars. We're going to drag that star plate over the image and align it over the image. In Affinity Photo, this is very easy. We just snap the star plate into place. I'm just running some transparencies here over it so you can see the star plate is perfectly in place. Everything is just where it should be. And then we're going to switch to the compositing tool and composite those stars in. We'll select the screen option. Screen tends to give, in fact, it does give the option that's truest to the original. Unless you're working with some really, really weird lighting or shadow conditions, which we are not here. So we're good to go. Now, we have all the benefits of the aesthetic development protocol on the galaxy itself. It's beautifully sharpened. The shattering arms of its companion galaxy, even though they are very dim, are well preserved and you see better light preservation using the aesthetic development protocol. And yeah, it's just a beautiful image. And this is a way to get all the benefits of the aesthetic development protocol as well as deconvolve stars right back into your image. Now this image, while nice, is a bit undersaturated. There's not much color. So just for fun, I'm just going to mess around with the curves tool in Affinity Photo, jump right into the color curve channels and adjust them just to put a little bit of saturation and vibrance back into the image. And here we go, the finished image with color curves adjusted just to increase the saturation and, and get the colors a bit better. Uh, it's another topic entirely, but I know PixInsight says that the uh, spectrophotometric color calibration tool balances the colors perfectly and don't mess with them. I almost never find that to be true, or very rarely anyway. But that is a topic for another video entirely. What matters here is now you know how to take advantage of all the benefits of the ADP, the Aesthetic Development Protocol, and get truly deconvolved stars. So I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions, and as always, thanks for watching. Now get out there and shoot the sky.